Hi friends, let's talk about coffee and immunity. What's the connection? Does coffee help your immunity or does coffee hurt your immunity? In order to answer these questions, we have to understand what's in coffee, what time of day that you drink your coffee and how your body responds to coffee. So in this video, we're only going to focus on black coffee, which can improve your health if you drink it right. A cup of black coffee has over a thousand ingredients that talk to your body. These ingredients are antioxidants, they're anti-inflammatory, they're anti-carcinogenic, they're anti-thrombotic and anti-fibrotic. In other words, it can help you combat toxins, inflammation, cancer, clotting and scarring. Keep in mind that if you're adding inflammatory ingredients like sugar, creamers, butter, you're going to cancel out the beneficial effects that may make coffee good. Here are some examples of how I would use coffee to biohack my biology. If I were to drink any alcohol, including red wine, I would definitely get coffee into my system as it's been shown to protect the liver against the inflammatory damage of alcohol. No amount of alcohol is safe for your liver. In fact, if I were to have liver inflammation like hepatitis, I would drink a cup of coffee daily because it's been shown to help reduce liver inflammation. My dad had Parkinson's and if I thought I was at risk, I would also drink a little coffee. Fortunately, most cases of Parkinson's are not genetic. But don't take these scenarios as a blank permission slip to drink unlimited cups of coffee. Keep in mind, everyone is different and there are people who shouldn't drink coffee. And we're going to talk about them later. Globally, hundreds of billions of cups are enjoyed every year. And in some nations, each coffee drinker consumes pounds of coffee a year. And if you're going to drink that much coffee, of course, it's going to have an impact on your body and immunity. Coffee is actually a drink made from seeds of a cherry fruit, which which takes about a year to mature. There are basically two types of commercially available coffees, gourmet or instant. 70% of the market is filled with gourmet coffee from the more expensive Coffea Arabica, originally from Ethiopia, which is more difficult to grow and requires more rain as well as mild temperatures. Now, if you're a cheap coffee drinker, that was my mom. She went for instant coffees and blends. You're drinking Coffea Canifora Robusta, which occupies 30% of the world's market. Now, coffee beans, like many other seeds, are just full of fiber, minerals, vitamins, and phytonutrients. But when you drink coffee, if you're not eating the grit, you're missing out on a lot of nutrients. Nevertheless, you still get some soluble fiber, about one and a half grams in the liquid per cup, and getting fiber is super healthy. But you need 30 grams of fiber a day to reduce inflammation and to improve your immunity. And you're not gonna feel so good if you try to meet your fiber requirements by just drinking coffee. But if you ate a cup of beans with your coffee, that would be 15 grams of fiber half of your daily requirements. Isn't that easy? Another nutrient in coffee that supports your immunity is potassium, which is necessary for your immune cells to function. A cup of coffee has about 160 milligrams of potassium. Sounds like a lot. You need actually 3,400 milligrams of potassium a day. There is no safe way for you to reach potassium by drinking coffee alone. However, a cup of cooked spinach has 1,180 milligrams of potassium and a cup of beans has over 700 milligrams of potassium. So if you're not eating beans and greens, you are potassium deficient. Another mineral in coffee is magnesium, a whopping seven milligrams, but your body needs at least 400 milligrams a day. An ounce of pumpkin seeds has 156 milligrams. That's just two tablespoons sprinkled over your plate. Without magnesium, your immune cells won't function well and you will know it because you'll be achy, sore, and have sleep issues. Speaking of sleep, if you are drinking your coffee late in the day, even if you drink the perfect amount, it most likely is affecting your sleep. If you are sleeping past midnight, you are missing out on your natural biological rhythm to secrete beneficial hormones before midnight. So it's really beneficial for you to get to bed before midnight to optimize your immunity. If you're not getting at least seven hours of sleep, that's going to reduce your antibody production so much that if you're going to go get a vaccine the following day, you should reschedule that appointment. Medical schools are struggling to get their students to respond to vaccines, probably because they're not optimizing their students' sleep and diet. And biologically, some people can't metabolize caffeine. Sure, you'll get energy, focus, and alertness from caffeine, but if you are a slow metabolizer, that effect can last over 12 hours and prevent you from relaxing and sleeping. And that's a problem not only because it can cause anxiety, high blood pressure, just two cups can give you a fatal heart attack. If you're already struggling with high blood pressure, heart arrhythmias, caffeine, especially instant coffee, that has twice as much caffeine as gourmet coffee, it's not your friend. 
you should really consider switching to decaf or quitting coffee altogether. But if you aren't a slow metabolizer, caffeine can be beneficial to your immunity. Caffeine has been shown to be anti-inflammatory and reduces the action of inflammatory cells like neutrophils and eosinophils and inflammatory signaling molecules called cytokines like tumor necrosis factor and interleukin-12. But like all drugs and poisons, the effect is in the amount you take. If you overtake a drug, including caffeine, you will have side effects. And if you don't take enough, it's not going to work. And this is also true true for vitamins. This is why your multivitamin doesn't work. That's also why if you mega dose on vitamins and minerals, you can also get sick. So every single drug has a sweet spot when it comes to dosing for optimal health. So let's take a look at the sweet spot for coffee and clinical diseases. Drinking some coffee, but not more than four cups a day can lower your risk of asthma. And this is why asthmatics can find relief when they drink some coffee. This makes sense as caffeine is known to open up your airways. Theophylline, a prescription drug, is a caffeine derivative which has been used for asthma control. But don't confuse the root cause or triggers with medications or food used for relief. Until you spend the time to figure out the root causes of your asthma exacerbations and avoid them, I doubt coffee is going to be the answer to your asthma triggers. Coffee, like many foods, has hormones that interact with your immunity like melatonin and serotonin and amino acids like L-tyrosine and L-phenylalanine, which affects your hormone, regulating how your immune cells talk to each other to affect your blood pressure, your mood, your sleep, amongst many other functions of your body. It also has other phytochemicals to help reduce your body's oxidative toxins such as nicotinic acid, tannic acid, chlorogenic acid, quercetin, amongst hundreds of other phytochemicals. And these compounds are believed to interact with your DNA and protect your DNA and your proteins in your cells. Coffee, like all plants, have anti-infective properties and was shown in this study to increase the killing power of antibiotics against a deadly bacteria called cholera, known as a leading cause of diarrhea around the world. This is exciting news that research is now focusing on practical solutions that lots of people can access instead of antibiotics that the world is rapidly losing because we have all abused and overused them for the last 90 years. Antibiotics are powerful tools that I need to save your life when you need it. But most of my tools are disappearing due to drug resistance from overuse and abuse and will unlikely be around for any of us in the next 20 years unless we change how we use them in both people and animals. Stop buying the over-the-counter antibiotics and ask your provider when they prescribe one to you, do you really need it? Even in America, patients are often given antibiotics when they don't need it and they just get side effects. Drugs don't heal you. They support your body by targeting a specific mechanism. Your body heals you. No matter how much antibiotic I give you, if you don't have the right equipment, it's not gonna save your life if your body can't figure out how to heal you. And this is why I talk about food. The ingredients in food affects your immunity. Caffeine in the lab has been shown to reduce antibody levels and inhibit cells that make antibodies, which are your T and B cells. Now, I wish I could tell you if this would affect you when you get vaccinations, but no one has done that study, so I really don't know if you should or shouldn't drink caffeine before vaccines. But we do know that when you take caffeine, you get a burst of energy, alertness, and focus for a short while. And it does this by blocking adenosine receptors unnaturally preventing your body from relaxing. And depending on how you metabolize caffeine, this effect can last a couple hours to several hours. Over time, you will develop a tolerance and require more and more cups of coffee to get the same effect. And if you switch to that instant coffee, you can get 50 to 60% more caffeine than the gourmet coffee Arabica. But just know if you're chasing coffee to get the stimulus, then you're addicted. Caffeine alone can suppress your immune system making your immune soldiers less responsive, partially through the interaction of adenosine, which naturally helps to lower your heart rate and increase blood flow. So if you have heart disease like palpitations, faster regular heart rate, anxiety or irritable mood, coffee is not the beverage you should be drinking. A treatment for some arrhythmias is adenosine, which doesn't work well if you just drink some coffee. And when your heart isn't working well, your entire body is stressed. That's inflammation. Caffeine interacts with all of your muscles in your entire body by interacting with the skeletal muscles like your biceps and influence pain and smooth muscles in your blood vessels, influencing how much blood flow you get in your lungs, heart and gut. Stimulating your gut muscles can make 
you have diarrhea. So if you are constipated, it may help you, but if you're dehydrated, it will dehydrate you more, which will decrease your immunity. To sum it up, if you drink a cup of coffee and it doesn't increase your heart rate or blood pressure, it doesn't give you diarrhea or tremors or insomnia, or doesn't make you anxious or irritable, then you know, it actually may be beneficial for your immunity. Personally, I don't like the taste of coffee and I've never drank coffee and all the health benefits that I read about coffee, I can get from eating other foods. If you wanna learn more about what I eat and why I eat it, check out this next video.